Chapter five, describing and displaying distributions numerically. This chapter focuses on quantitative graphs uh, as opposed to chapter three, which was on categorical. In the last chapter, we talked about describing distributions with the acronym SOX, shape, outlier, center, spread. So let's start with center since the mo it's the most obvious place to start. If we have a whole bunch of numbers, we wanna boil it down to a single value to represent an entire data set. Now there's a number uh, of ways that we can describe center. Okay, we have these four in the bottom here, but the two most common are the mean and the median. The mean you're familiar with, it's the arithmetic average, meaning we take all of our values, we add them up and we divide by how many there are. It's the quote unquote best measure of center because we calculate it using every data value in the data set. The reason we don't use it all the time is because it's said to be sensitive quote unquote to outliers, meaning when we have an outlier, it pulls the mean away from the center. It's also known as non-resistant to outliers. So when we have outliers, we wanna use something instead of the mean. And the thing that we use instead of the mean is the median. The median is the middle of the distribution. Remember to put the numbers in order first. So when we have an odd number of values in our data set, it's that number that's right in the middle. If we have an even number of values in our data set, like we do here, it's the average of the two numbers in the middle. Median is easy to find. It's resistant to outliers. If we had another number at the end here, let's say like 500, this median changes just slightly. It's gonna move from 14 up to this number here, 15. The mean on the other hand would get a lot bigger with the addition of that outlier. Okay, the cons, it's less accurate because we're not using every value to find the median. It only ends up being this number right here. The mode is another measure of center that you're familiar with. It's the most often occurring value. There can be multiple modes if we have certain numbers that appear most often. There could be no mode if no numbers happen more than once. Mode is for categorical data only. Okay? We don't use mode for quantitative data. We might reference it in our answer, but it's not used as a measure of center. Lastly, we have something called the mid-range, which literally means the middle of the range. This isn't really a, an effective or widely used measure of center, but it's good to know what it is. Basically, we're just gonna take the minimum, add the maximum, and divide that number by two. It's very easy to find. However, it's really sensitive to outliers because our outliers are gonna be either that minimum or that maximum value. And that being said, it's usually not a very good typical value. So those are our measures of center, and it's easy to understand why we would want to take an entire distribution and boil it down to a single number that represents all the numbers in our data set. But what about spread? Why is spread important? So here we have two different data sets, and both of these data sets have the same mean, median, and mode. And if we look at the graphical distribution, this dot plot of the first data set, we can see all these values are tightly clustered around the mean. Okay, compare that to the one on the bottom, and they're a lot more spread out. And that's important to know uh, when we're looking at a data set. So as for some examples of how we can measure the spread of a distribution. The first is something that you've seen before. It's the range, which is just how far it is from the minimum to maximum value. It's very easy to find. However, as I just mentioned, since our outliers would be either those minimum or maximum values, the range is very sensitive to having an outlier in the data. Okay, it's gonna give a distorted view anytime an outlier is present. So that being said, it's not a good measure of spread. We only give this as a supplemental um, piece of information to one of these next two measures of spread. The interquartile range, or the IQR for short, is from our summer assignment, so hopefully it looks vaguely familiar. And this describes the middle 50% of the data. So basically we cut off the top 25%, cut off the bottom 25%, that's where the outliers would be, and we look just at the middle half of the data. Okay, it's a little more difficult to find, um, but since we're ignoring the extreme values at either end, it gives a better indication of the spread. So how we actually find it is we find the third quartile, which is the 75th percentile, and we subtract the first quartile, which is the 25th percentile. Really, we're gonna use our calculator for this um, and let it give us a graphical display, which we'll talk about shortly. 
the last measure of spread is the standard deviation, and this is really the building block of this entire course. To boil it down to a single sentence, standard deviation is the average distance from the mean for an entire data set. Here's our equation for it. The good news is, is that we're never going to calculate this by hand. We're going to let our calculator do it. Okay, for the same reason that mean is the best measure of center, standard deviation is the best measure of spread. It's calculated using every data value, unlike median and IQR, which is calculated using just some of the data values. Okay, it is sensitive to outliers, so when there's outliers present, we don't want to use it. Okay, and that being said, we use mean and standard deviation when we have unimodal and symmetric distributions. Once we're dealing with skewed distributions, we want to use median for the center and the IQR for the spread. All right, now that we have the intro of those measures of spread, let's backtrack a bit. Go back to quartiles. So there's three quartiles, Q1, Q2, Q3. Q1 is the 25th percentile. Q2 is the 50th percentile. This is just the median. And then Q3 is obviously the 75th percentile. We can find these manually, but we're not going to. We have our TI-84s or 89s, and we're going to let those calculators do the work. So if we have a list of data, okay, there are cutoffs, right? So for example, the first quartile is 70. 25% of our data is at or below 70. The other 75% is at or above 70. Okay, the median we know is the 50th percentile. It's the, the middle number. 50% of our data is to the left of the median. 50% is above the median. Okay, and the same thing with a third quartile. 75% is at or above, I'm sorry, at or below 90. And the other 25% is at or above 90. Okay, we can see it again in this bottom drawing. Okay, it's just break, broken into fourths. Okay, and it's where in our data set those numbers would be. Nine times out of 10, when we find quartiles, we're finding them as part of a five number summary, which we're gonna to use to make a box plot. And a box plot is just a graphical representation of the five numbers that we can boil down a data set to. And those five numbers are the minimum, the maximum, and the three quartiles. There's two types of box plots. There's a regular box plot, and there's a modified box plot, with the difference being that the modified box plot shows outliers, a regular box plot does not. Now we're gonna make a box plot in just a moment, but before we do, there's something called the outlier rule. And I'd mentioned in the previous chapter that we were gonna talk about ways to quantitatively, mathematically determine if something is an outlier. And this is the first way that we can do it. Okay, if something's more than one and a half IQRs away from the quartiles, we would identify it as an outlier. So for example, in other words, uh, if we take quartile one, and we subtract one and a half times the IQR. Okay, that gives us a value. We call that the lower fence. If we have any data values in our data set that is below that number, we would identify those as outliers. Okay, S similarly, if we took quartile three and we added one and a half times the IQRs, uh, that would give us the upper fence, uh, and anything above that upper fence would be an outlier. Okay, so we're gonna find the five number summary and determine outliers for this data set at the bottom of this slide. Once we're in class, I'm gonna show you exactly how to get this five number summary on our calculator. Uh, but for now, I'm just gonna put it up on the slide here. All right, so when we have these numbers, the first thing we wanna determine is the IQR. So the IQR is Q3 minus Q1. So the IQR is two. All right, now we wanna use this to find the upper and lower fence. So lower fence first. It's Q1 minus one and a half times the IQR. So Q1 is three, one and a half times that IQR of two is zero. Anything below this number is an outlier. So if we look at our data set, that negative one would be an outlier. Upper fence, same thing, except this time we have Q3 plus one and a half times that IQR. Q3 is five plus one and a half times two gives us eight. Anything above this number would be an outlier. So this nine is an outlier. All right, so now if we were to make this into a box plot, okay, first thing we would start with is the scale. Okay, and we want to draw the scale so everything fits. So I'm going to go by twos. I'm going to start at negative two, and I'm going to try to space out my tick marks evenly. So zero, so two, four, six, eight, ten. 
All right, so now I always start with the box. Okay, so I'm going to start off by drawing this quartile here, 3 to 5. Okay, so we're going from 3 to 5, and then the median Q2 is at 4. Okay, that's our box for a box plot. Now the whiskers are going to go to the smallest number that's not an outlier, okay, which is this 1 right here. So we draw a whisker down to 1 and then up to 7. Okay, and then we have an outlier at negative one. I'm going to put a little asterisk there and an outlier at nine. Not the neatest drawing, all right, but that's what our box plot would look like. Okay, it shouldn't have this line. I don't know what happened there. Uh, it shouldn't have this line through the middle here. Okay, it should just go out from the ends of the box there. Okay, we would want a title on this, whatever the context of this problem was. Maybe it was like um, number of fish in a fish tank. All right. So when we look at that graph, what does the box plot show? The box is showing the middle 50% of the data, okay? And then that middle line is the median, okay? The shape, if we look at the whiskers, that's telling us is the distribution symmetric, if those whiskers are about the same length, or is it skewed to one side or the other, okay? The skew would be towards the longer of the two whiskers. Uh, and then outliers are just denoted by asterisks or any marks uh, that aren't attached to the whiskers. Okay, ideally, if we have a box plot, we would have a histogram to go with it just so we can get a better understanding of what the shape is. Here we see some box plots with their histograms. Uh, we can see how the shapes match up. So here we have a unimodal and symmetric shape. We can see the whiskers are the same length. Okay, and then the numbers way on the outside would be considered outliers. This is kind of... Uh, uniform, not quite, but um, it's almost spread out where everything's about one quarter of the length. Okay, skewed to the right. Okay, this whisker is a lot longer. And this one is skewed or really symmetric with outliers. Okay, approximately symmetric here, outliers on the end. So once we take this off, we can see this is approximately the same length whiskers.